Y2K is directed by Kyle Mooney, and for those of you who are watching this, I'm assuming you've heard of it. I'm sure if you lived through the 90s or even a bit of the early 2000s, Y2K was a term that came up pretty often. This idea that computers were not being able to process a new date at that time and that it would basically cause them to malfunction and it could be an issue. Obviously, that didn't happen. Everything is fine, but it caused enough of a conspiracy scare that people thought everything was going to shut down and it was going to be Armageddon times across the earth. There was going to be this worldwide blackout. It was nuts. There was all kinds of doomsday prepping going on. That's not exactly what's going on in this movie, though. This one has its own spin on the idea of Y2K. In this, you follow a group of teenagers who are attending a New Year's Eve party. And as the party is going on and the clock strikes midnight, machines take over and they start killing people and destroying everything. And now a bunch of survivors at that party have to come together and hopefully save the world. And that's the premise. That's all it's being led on and that's all you have to work off of. It keeps things very simple and to the point. Granted, there are things going on with characters on the side that are, you know, different subplots and relating to what's going on with them, their arcs. But overall, it's really just a survive the night scenario. You're going to hear two comparisons to this movie over and over again. The first one is to This Is The End, which was about 11 years ago. It's a comedy about the end of the world and a bunch of survivors trying to make it through and getting into very absurd scenarios. Then you're also going to hear comparisons to uh, this being like an SNL sketch. Because Kyle Mooney is someone who's worked on SNL for a long time. And even now you can see him every now and then. And because of that experience going into this movie it can feel like a very you know, big budget SNL sketch. And if those are two things that off the gate do not gel with you, you're going to have a hard time with Y2K. If you are somebody who can stand those things, then I feel like you're going to enjoy Y2K. For my money's worth, I think Y2K is exactly the movie that you're expecting it to be. And it knows that. This is a very self-aware, bizarre, over-the-top experience that is seeped in 90s nostalgia and references. It feels like a movie that's a byproduct of the 90s. So much about it is pulled from that moment of time. It actually surprises me a little bit to a point that this movie is made in 2024 because nothing about it feels like a 2024 movie. Everything from the way it's shot, the cinematography over there from Bill Pope, the soundtrack choices, the performances, the dialogue, the characterization, the visual effects, it all feels like a throwback to that moment. And I kind of respect the fact that the movie goes for that attention to detail. There are so many pop culture references in here that you hear in 2024 and have a giggle over, but you kind of remember the moment of time in the 90s, and in that moment, it all just makes sense. For example, Limp Biscuit. I mean, right now in 2024, there are those who will tell you, well, Limp Biscuit wasn't that great, but at that time, Pretty much everyone was listening to Limp Bizkit music. It was all over the place. My phone ringtone for the last 12 years has been Take a Look Around, which is the opening song of MI2. So, like, just, that's just to tell you, like, Limp Bizkit is something that's been around a while. And Fred Durst is in this movie as well, so which is, makes it even funnier. But there's a reverence to Limp Bizkit that becomes a part of things. And so the movie doing all of that is also really fun. The characters that you get are pretty simple characters. You're not really getting to work too much with a lot of their characteristics, but they do a fine enough job of, you know, making their arcs count. Like our main character, Eli, played by Jaden Martell, he's just someone who really wants to tell this girl he likes that he likes her and hopefully get a good response back. The girl in question, Laura, played by Rachel Zegler, she's a popular girl in school. People seem to fawn over her, but you know, it doesn't seem like they're gonna have a chance to connect in the process, but there is hope yet. And so they're trying to survive the night along with a band of other misfits along the way who also become endearing characters in their own regards, like with Danny, played by Julian Dennison, who is very good in this movie. He's kind of the scene stealer and I feel like he's going to end up being the most you know talked about character from this entire movie. He was really great in it. And so as they're trying to get through this and get go through all the absurd scenarios that they do, there's commitment there. They just go for it. And again, it's all absurd and over the top. It doesn't take itself seriously at all. And I credit the movie for that because it makes certain things 
feel a lot easier in the process. I have no doubt in my mind there's gonna be people who don't like Y2K, but frankly, I can't tell you it's a good, great movie either. Like, I can't look you in the eyes and say, hey, this is one of the greats, one of the best movies of the year. It is absolutely not that. It's a movie that, again, is just designed to be very silly, fun entertainment and just goes for broke when it comes to a few things and it completely commits to those factors. As the movie is approaching the third act and things, you know, start going to hell, it's very entertaining, but it's also incredibly silly, especially how certain situations are dealt with. And it's, again, it, it just completely commits to that idea of it. And like I said, those needle drops, there's a lot of them. Of course, where I mentioned Limp Bizkit, there's a few of those. And with Fred Durst over there, there's a couple of others as well. But the one that you're thinking would happen with Fred Durst over there may or may not be the one that happens. The one that happens kind of had me rolling. Ah. I wish it was crazier, though. That, I would say, is an issue I have with the movie. Uh, because I really feel like it could have gone even more bizarre, but it doesn't always do that. It kind of tends to hold itself back a little bit. Like I said, this is not something to write home about. Like, you know, the dialogue isn't particularly great, or, you know, a lot of things that are going on aren't very good. Like, the first act especially is a bit rough, especially when it comes to the editing of that first act. There are shots that go on for way too long. There are so many abrupt pauses and beats to try and get a laugh. And some of those jokes really do not land. And that's something that happens in the second and third acts a little bit as well. But every now and then the jokes do land and some things do count. And so it kind of balances itself out in those moments. But I really wish it was a little tighter when it came to a few things. But overall, I think Y2K is just, again, a very silly, fun movie. Embrace it for what it is. It's just trying to have some fun for 90 minutes, not trying to do anything more than that. It actually surprises me this is an A24 movie because nothing about this movie feels like an A24 movie. It feels way too out there for its like own good in a way. But I guess because they're trying to make a play for something bigger now with, you know, bigger budget movies, I suppose it fits that mold. So I don't know. I'll let you guys, you know, decide what to think of it. And I think Y2K is a decent enough time and I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Like I said, I think there are going to be people who absolutely hate this movie. And I completely understand if you do. But if you meet it on its level, if you kind of tap into exactly what it's doing, you might just have a fun time with it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon. As always, if you like this, please do subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the movies.